Got this side mast off. It's that fresh ass tail light looking good. I think I'm just gonna buff this side. I don't know, I'm thinking about doing like a, you know, kind of a half and take it outside and show you the, the buff side versus the not buff side. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I actually still got to mask this. So I'm gonna finish masking it. Gonna hit it with my soapy water clay mitt surface prep mitt, whatever you want to call it. Get this side cleaned off and uh, hit it with that 166. All right, well, I initially thought I would be able to one-step this thing, but this doesn't look like that's gonna be happening. So I ended up uh, grabbing the McGuire's Ultimate Compound. Got the compound pad, ran over this, pulled a lot of these scratches out. A lot of them were pretty deep and there's still scratches in there, I mean, I'm not going for perfect on this thing, it's just going to sit outside and get destroyed again, but I just really wasn't satisfied with the level of correction I was getting with, uh, you know, I tried a few different products on there, the 166, the 151, and then even the, uh, what is it, the 105, I don't know, it's just like, it seems like that stuff works good by hand, and if you're doing a smaller spot, it seems like it's okay, but trying to get around the whole truck with the 105 was just not happening so I thought well I'm gonna try the ultimate compound and so happened to have a bottle laying around so definitely pulled a lot of the scratches out I mean there were quite a bit of deeper scratches and holograms so I'm a lot more satisfied with this and I guess that's another good example too, you know, you have to do test spots and the funny part is I actually did a test spot on the fender. What cracks me up is when I went to clay bar this, I got a lot of contaminants off with the clay bar. Then I made the video and I clayed the bedside and there wasn't that much of a contaminant on there so it kind of made me laugh. And then same thing, I hit this fender with the 166, turned out great. I'm over here doing the door and it just wasn't working so you know it depends and I think this door might have been painted so there might be different clear on there that could be part of the issue but to make things a little bit easier I figured I'd just grab the ultimate compound and fly over it and I mean to correct a lot of this stuff I'd have to get into wet sanding and you know the big problem with wet sanding too is you're removing Whenever, when the clear dries, all the UV protection floats up to the surface. So as you sand and try to remove scratches or, or remove some of the orange peel, you're removing that layer of UV protection. You know, especially being black and this truck is kept outside, you know, it would be nice to, to wet sand this whole truck and really buff it down. But, I mean, this truck's kind of getting to the same level as uh, my other cars. It's like, you know, the, the paint job's just not there. And actually a perfect example, I actually, I buffed this thing back in, I think it was 2015. And, uh, you know, this is the clear failing. So I ran a sander over this hood and buffed it. Might actually be able to see some of the curly cues. I don't know, a lot of body shops are using the, the 3M setup with the, you know, you use 1500 on a you know dry sanding it which I'm not a huge fan of dry sanding either because I feel like you end up you know getting contaminants in there and I don't know if you can see there's a bunch of curly cues from the DA hopefully that's coming through on the camera so anyways I had this truck at the shop and I thought well, I'm just gonna fly over the hood with the DA and buff the hood out and make the hood look really nice and it looked great I mean this was not didn't look like this when it was finished you know, this is just over the last couple years, the sun beating down on it and just destroyed it. So kind of going back to my comment about the UV protection, I mean, that, that could have been exactly what happened there. You know, like I, I ran over this hood 
with the dual action sander and that removed enough clear to just degrade that UV protection enough for it to start chewing the clear away. So and especially on a black vehicle, I mean, if you got a black vehicle and it sits outside constantly, it's going to get, you know, trounced by the sun. So you really want to think twice before you go sanding on it and trying to, you know, if you wanted to get crazy, really making it look good and sanding the orange peel out of it. It's definitely something to, to think twice about. And even my Lincoln, like I was considering sanding that. And, you know, part of me thinks like, oh uh, yeah, it'd be cool. But another part of me is like, man, it looks pretty good the way it is now with the texture that's in it. Cause it does have kind of a half-ass texture in it. You know, it could be better. But I feel like what I'm gonna lose in UV protection and all the time and effort I'm gonna put in a, to wet sanding and buffing that thing, I just don't feel like it's worth it. So, you know, it's gotta be worth your time too. And kind of going back to using this compound, you know, I kept fighting this, I'm fighting this, trying to do a one step, and then finally I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta try something else. You know, you get to the point where you're just fighting yourself. And, <clears throat> you know, trying to do it with the one step product, I mean, it would have brought the shine back, and it was like bringing some shine back, but there was still just a ridiculous amount of scratching in there. So, just running over with the compound, I was very happy with the results. You know, like I said, it's it's definitely not perfect. And I mean, I could probably try wet sanding some of this stuff, but you know, like I said, guys, I'm not going for perfect here. This thing is gonna sit in my dad's driveway. His grandkids are gonna ram bikes into it and all that other good stuff. So I just want to make it better than it was. And uh, I think it's gonna turn out pretty damn good. I mean, just like the Mustang, you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be a dramatic difference. You know, on this truck, I'll show you later, the rear bumper is like rusting out, the front bumper is just destroyed, someone did a spot repair on it. You know, you can see here the clear is all peeling off. You know, this is the same thing. It's like the sun just beats down on the top of this, it just gets hammered by the sun. But you can see someone painted this, I don't know, I'll show you this outside where you can actually see it later. but. Someone repainted this. You can tell where they masked it off. It's flaking off. This is, I don't know if they did the whole thing or a spot job or what happened, but you can see it's delamming by the fog light. So, yeah, I just wanted to give you a shot of it. This turned out really good up here. I mean, some of this is actually pretty much 100% correcting. And then I'm going to run over it with that. 166 as the final polish, which I think is going to turn out really great. So I already tried a little spot and that stuff is actually great. So I'm actually getting into using that product for what it's for. I'll have to read the bottle. I don't know if that thing is really considered an all-in-one corrector, kind of like the PRC is or the M66. But it definitely was not handling what was going on here. So I had to switch it up. So that's that. Like I said, hit it with the Ultimate Compound. I'm going to fly over this with the 166 and show you what that looks like. Figured I'd give you a little 50-50 shot. This side is just the compound done to it. And then over here, the D166. So, it should give you an idea of how much the polish refines those compound scratches.
nice deep black glossy polished finish really pulled all those compound scratches out really nice and yeah it's still got you know the deeper scratches in it or whatever but you know once again you get back from a distance it's a dramatic difference so I'll say this much that 166 is an awesome polish and it's it's a wax too so I mean technically I don't have to go over this with a wax I mean I'm still going to definitely gonna put a coat of wax on this but I mean you could be done right here that's it you polished it the 166 on there it's waxed you're ready to go all right so let me uh, get the rest of this polished out show you what that looks like definitely off to a really good start here very satisfied with the way this is turning out it's a lot better I'm glad I busted out that compound dramatic difference All right, well, here's a bottle. It says it's an all-in-one. I don't know, maybe if I had used it with a compound pad. I guess I'll have to try that out. Definitely does a good job polishing though, I'll tell you that much. That is gorgeous. What a difference. Beautiful. Finally gonna start buffing the rest of this lightning. This has been uh It's been a difficult endeavor, but I have been dealing with a ridiculous amount of family drama. Maybe I should make videos about that. So I'm sure everyone would love to hear the super stupid dramatic stories I have to say about my family. So, anyways, gonna get into buffing the rest of this. Try to get you some before shots here of how terrible this looks. Especially this is really super bad right here. Look at that. Nasty. 
So I am going to uh, got my awesome McGuire's bottles. Got the ultimate compound here, and then that uh, the D166, which smells amazing. Gonna do the final polish with this stuff. This is an all-in-one, but it just you know a lot of things with detail. You really just have to figure out what products are gonna work for you. You know, I'm a pretty big fan of this uh, the PRC, the 151. I'm gonna use it on the rims. The rims turned out good, but you know the rims are they're just they're just bad. You know, they've got some hacked parking lot paint job on them, but let me look at them. They look great. So from a distance, they're rolling down the road. Definitely looks good, but there's really not much I can do to make them any better than that. So that's kind of the other thing, like finding out, you know, making that choice of like, you know, how far you should go with this stuff. And even with this truck, I mean, you know, I could get crazy. I could flat sand it and, uh, you know, compound it down and maybe even use a rotary to get a nice cut on it and then come back with the DA to do the polish work. And But, you know, it really boils down to, and this truck's gonna sit outside, it's gonna get beat up. It's not a show truck. Like, I just wanna, you know, clean it up and make it look nice. So I got some towels stuffed under here. Actually, I still have to mask this too, so I gotta do that, both sides. And uh, so like I said, I'm gonna fly over it with the, uh, the dual action polisher gonna do a two-step I got the compound pad I've got the uh, polish pad and then I'm thinking probably the uh, probably finish it up with this m26 get a nice carnuba carnaba wax whatever you want to call it so we'll get a good coat of that on there and then uh, probably to totally finish it off I'm thinking uh, the synthetic spray wax the ultimate spray wax all right, get cracking on this.
did the compound. I think I've talked before about this. This is where you know the clear is starting to fail, so that's not going to buff off. And once again, it's not perfect, but quite a dramatic improvement. Definitely pulled most of the holograms out. There's some deeper scratches in there, but not really going to bother with it. And then especially this area over the door handle. I mean, what a tremendous difference. That was all hologrammed like crazy. So pull a lot of that out of there. It's looking pretty good. Bedside here. And there's some deeper scratches in there, but for the most part, looking pretty good. So, the next thing I'm going to do is get this finished off with the 166 and then I still have to do the tailgate and the bumper. The bumper is kind of the same story as the hood. Bumper's got a lot of issues so I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to compound it. I might try the compound on there but this is pretty destroyed. Just needs to be painted but I'll fly over it with something see what happens. And then uh, the roof, I don't know. I think I'm just going to, I might just use the black wax on there. Some kind of cleaner wax kind of nice it up a little bit. I'm not too hip on uh, laying into that with the compound because the roof gets beat up with the sun and gonna have the same situation play out like this where the clear starts failing. So, and you don't really see the roof so it's really not a big deal. It doesn't have to be buffed to perfection. So, swap my pad out, get that uh, the 166 going, do some polishing. Bumper is not looking too good. Pretty much what I was saying earlier, you know, looks like someone did a pretty shoddy spot repair on this thing. It's kind of funny because a lot of the guys, you know, doing a spot repair is pretty difficult. And it seems like nine times out of ten you've got guys who don't even really know how to paint a car that end up in a situation of doing something like this. So it's probably why they have a tendency to fail as badly as they do. But even a properly... Uh, you know, even a properly applied spot repair. You know, once you get into using a, a melter clear, which is like, melter is like a way to blend clear coat. But the problem with a melter is it has no UV protection. So whatever spot they use to melt or burn, like a lot of people call that a clear burn. The shop I first worked at called it a melt. So. I always call it a melt, which is apparently not really the terminology because everyone else I've met calls it a clear burn. But anyways, uh, you know, you have to keep in mind that a spot repair like that, that whatever melter they use doesn't have any kind of uh, ultraviolet ray protection. So it's going to fail. I mean, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And then of course you get people that tell you, oh, we'll just mix some clear in there. It's like, well, you can't really do that because that kind of defeats the purpose of having a melter. You start putting clear in it and it doesn't want to melt so the other sign that something funky is going on is look at how black the pad is so it's probably some kind of single stage or whatever it's got pigmentation in it so whatever I mean like I said this bumper really needs to either be uh, repainted or possibly even replaced but because uh, it is kind of damaged but you know this could be repaired it'd just be time-consuming really have to strip this thing because it's delamming so bad but I don't have a shop so I can't really pull that off and I have enough problems painting in a spray booth so I'm really not gonna spray something in a garage it's kind of a waste of time in my opinion so like I said just ran over it just to see what would happen the results are uh, obviously not good but not much I can do about it so Guess that's how that's gonna stay kind of the same situation with the rear bumper rear bumper is rusting out and you know it really needs to be probably replaced because this is just not looking good but you know it is what it is don't you love that one well it is what it is you know what it is it is what it is so that's that got the compound pretty much finished up and then uh, probably going to mask off some more on this side so I can uh, hit it with the wax. But I still got to polish the other side first anyways. And then 
I have to do these. I think I'm going to use the uh, 105 by hand on the handles. Probably can't really see, but they're pretty nasty. That 105 works really good by hand. Not a big fan of it with the dual action polisher, but it does work out really well by hand. Stuff is pretty potent. So, probably going to fly over this side with the, uh, the 166 and uh, take it from there. Going over with the D166, putting that polish on there. You know, it's technically uh, an all-in-one, but I do like using it as a final polish. Look at that. You can see right where I stopped using it. Really darkens that paint up. Pretty dramatic. Looks good. It's gonna look really good when it's all finished. Look at that. All right, back to work. Moving along here. Got this side done with the 166. You know, like I said, that's it's an all-in-one. I mean, it's supposed to be kind of like the M66 or the 151. But man, I really like using it as a final polish. So, I mean, there's some deep scratches in here I'm not too excited about, but once again, like I said, it's probably not worth my time to get too crazy with it. And I'm actually really happy with the result. I mean, it's very shiny. Man, does that look beautiful. This truck definitely needed it. Looked pretty good after hitting it with the compound too. But <clears throat> kind of wanted to show you guys. I mean, this 166 is just man, it's easy to wipe off. And it just leaves such a nice finish. It's really beautiful. So I'm pretty much down to uh I don't know what I'm gonna do with this bumper. I obviously uh caused more damage than I repaired on it, but like I said, I mean, that's kind of where that was at. I might just throw some wax on there and be done with it, even, and that seems kind of pointless too, but whatever, I still gotta hit this tail light. I already did the other side. And then uh, I actually still have to compound and polish the, the uh, tailgate, but it's coming along. And like I said before, I think the roof, I'm just gonna, I don't know, I'm kind of thinking about using the black wax on here. And then going over it with the uh, the high tech yellow, this stuff. So got the black wax. Like this stuff. This is pretty good. So <clears throat> I don't know. I'm thinking about you know thinking about getting crazy and just putting way too much wax on here. But that's probably where I'm going to go with this. I mean, I could probably just put this 26 on there and pretty much call it a day. But I don't know, I like playing around with this black wax, so I might do that. And this is definitely going on the roof, because i got to hit the roof with some kind of cleaner wax. I, I really don't want to run the buffer up there. And then uh, hit it with this fast finish, this stuff. It's been doing pretty good. And I put it on the rims of the R6. Not that you're going to be able to see it, but you know, I, did the, I put new brake pads on there. So the new brake pads have been dusting those wheels up. But man, that stuff's like, let's see if you can see it. I mean, it, it's literally just wiping off of there. So, <clears throat> I mean, this stuff is pretty awesome. And I know I've said it in videos before. I remember when it came out, I was like, man, that stuff looks stupid. Like, who cares? And then finally I broke down. And I was like, well, whatever. I should probably just try it out, you know? And uh, I have to say, it, it is pretty awesome. Probably the only thing that concerns me with this is being an aerosol. Like, you really want to use it in a well-ventilated area. Like, I definitely don't want to spray it all, all up in here with the doors closed. And then, uh, you know, wearing a mask too. Definitely don't want to be breathing this stuff. But it is an excellent product. So that's where we're at. Look at that mirror, it looks great. This is kind of falling into the same category as the white Mustang. I mean, 
This truck isn't as turd as the white Mustang is, but I'm kind of doing some turd polishing here. I mean, it's, it's obviously not perfect, you know, little paint issues or whatever that, you know, have to paint it to really fix it. But for the most part, man, it's looking good. I love detail in black. It's, it's very satisfying. Man, you get a black vehicle cleaned up right and it just looks amazing. So, and then I don't know, I'm kind of tempted to, I'm probably going to throw some fast finish on these rims. So, we'll see. You guys will see it happen. I'll let you know. Let me get finished cracking this 166 off here. Get going on this tail light and the, the uh, gate back there. I want to get a shot of this door handle. I don't know, I might actually sand this with 2500 because that's pretty destroyed. But, I don't know, maybe I'll try rubbing it up first. But, I'm gonna use the 105. Like I've said before, this stuff is really great when you use it by hand. Uh, for me personally, I've had issues with it, with a DA, so I kind of stick to using it by hand, but it works really good by hand. It cuts really well, so let's see what this can do. All right. Just did it by hand with the 105. I don't know, I'm really, I don't think I want to sand this. I think sanding it's just going to, it's probably just going to break through and ruin this thing. So this handle's pretty screwed up. Really needs to be repainted or replaced. So just did it by hand with the 105 and, and oh no, I used paper towels. Big no-no. Look at how terrible those paper towels turned out. So I'm going to do something really ridiculous and try getting a Q-tip back in here and see if I can clean that up because that's pretty chewed up. So we'll see what I can accomplish here. Got the Q-tip back in there. It's kind of the story of this truck, you know, once again, not perfect, but did make a pretty big improvement. So, especially from a distance, at least it looks black again. And this is really bad, like, that's just the, the clear is like, it's totally failing. But I mean, this is a big wear area, you know, you're constantly touching it, you know, grabbing the handle and all that, so it gets beat up. And of course, being black, it just gets destroyed by the sun. Stuff gets really hot and, you know, once again, it goes back to, uh, you know, just being able to take care of your vehicle. You know, this car, this truck doesn't get uh, washed and waxed as, enough, as much as it really needs to. So, it's kind of one of those situations where it just kind of happens. And of course, you know, the truck sits outside. If it was in a garage, it would definitely be a big improvement. Keep it out of the sun. But you know, that's what it does, it's outside, so. But it did make an improvement. And like I said, this 105 stuff, it's, it's really good. I mean, just doing it by hand, I've had really good luck with that stuff. So it's definitely, in my opinion, it's a good idea to have it in your arsenal because I feel like it cuts better than uh, the Ultimate Compound does. And I don't know, I might have to try that stuff uh, with the rotary buffer because it might work out a lot better with the rotary versus the DA. But I'm kind of doubting that just by what it does with the DA. Maybe that's just wishful thinking. But like I said, I mean, my uh, recommendation with that stuff is just to have it to use by hand. You know, something like this, doing a door handle or whatever, comes in really handy and it cuts just super fast. So definitely looks better. Yesterday, uh, got a coat of the black wax on there, and I just let it sit on there overnight. And actually, I still have to finish doing the, uh, I still have to polish the tailgate, so I'm going to finish that up. I got that other tail light buffed out, so you can use that 166 on the uh, tailgate. But... So I'm going to polish that tailgate, I'll get this wax wiped off of there, I'm going to put a coat of this high tech on there, and I think I'm going to just go ahead and top it off with the fast finish. 
had a little rain action last night kind of flooded the garage out a little bit so it's no big deal it's turned out pretty good so far though it's looking pretty good so I'll get that polished up try to get the uh, finishing touches done on this maybe I'll use that uh, I don't know if I'm gonna use metal polish or I think I'm gonna use the 151 on that see what that does and I still have to hit the handle on the other side with the 105 and I think I'm going to do this by hand with the uh, with the 166, even though I already waxed it, but that's fine. Hit that again. So yeah, it's coming along, I'm getting there. Just use the polish pad with that D166. You know, it's not perfect. There's a scratch in there. There's a there's a ding. But well, man, it sure did shine it up. You know, and you got to be careful, like, you know, that's why I'm masking this stuff off. I don't want this to get into the texture. So trying to keep that protected. Same thing with the handle. And then I might be able to get in here with, uh, like, a foam paintbrush and clean that out. But uh, <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do next is just get a, probably take this masking off. Grab the black wax, put a coat of black wax on the tailgate, put a coat on the tail lights, and uh, get this garage shut and turn the AC on because it's burning hot out. So get to this stuff with the door open while I can, let that haze up, and then I'm going to knock this, this black wax that's been sitting on there all night. I'm going to get that off, get going with that uh, the high-tech yellow wax. That black wax coat on there. Did the tail lights, tailgate. So, like I said, I'm gonna knock the rest of this wax off of there. Get cracking on this. All right, there it is. The black wax removed. working on this side. Got all the black wax off of there. Put on a coat of the high tech yellow 26. Can't seem to win today with the rain. Keeps flooding the garage out, but we got it done one way or the other. All right, that's what the uh, M26 wiped off of there. Definitely looking good. Got a nice shine going on. So I got a couple things to finish up, and clean up the some of the badges, get into that fuel door, and then, uh, like I said, I'm gonna fly over the whole thing with that fast finish. Now I've got some of that tonneau tonic. I'm gonna try cleaning up the tonneau cover, get that straightened out. But it's coming along. That tail light's looking good. Very nice. Already got this lightning emblem cleaned up with the D166. So still have to do the driver's side. So to give you a shot of it before. It's got the 166. Little uh, foam brush. Using some of that uh, final inspection. Moisten up the brush. Got it cleaned up. Decided to use that uh, 
the 166 microfiber towel, foam brush, some ear swabs, a little final inspection. Got it cleaned up pretty nice. Just took some of that uh, D166. I was saying I wanted to do the handles, so got it on both the handles. Gonna let it haze up and knock it off of there. And I don't know, it's such a nice day. It's actually uh, pretty comfortable out today. I think I'm gonna actually do one more coat of wax on here. This is really just me being crazy, but whatever. I'm gonna enjoy the weather before it starts snowing again. You know how that goes. Now, the truck looks great so far so uh, gonna put that final coat of gold class on there just because I feel like doing it really don't have to but uh, get that finished up get her wiped down real nice and then uh, get this uh, ultimate fast finished on there to top it off fuel door looking pretty good so it's getting there this wax on there. Got a coat of that gold class paste wax on there. It's actually really comfortable today. Look at that. Really low humidity. Very nice. What an enjoyable sunny day. Perfect day to do something like this and then with the humidity being uh, you know around normal the wax has a tendency to dry a little bit faster compared to super humid weather. It's looking good. You know, once again, this truck's not perfect. It's pretty far from perfect, but, you know, kind of like most of my videos, it's all, you know, to me, it's all about making an improvement and making the best out of what you have, you know? I mean, the worst part's gonna be this bumper. Still got messed with this, but not much I can do to fix that. But, uh, yep, got the paste wax on there. I don't know. I really like paste wax. Like, I'm a big fan of applying it to, like, I like just holding the container and, and wiping the wax out of there and applying it. To me, it's a little bit easier to deal with than a liquid. But I guess that's really personal preference. I also feel like a paste wax is uh, just a lot more concentrated. And uh, I feel like that concentration just going to, be better for the paint in the long run and especially when I do something like this you know if I if I do some buffing work on here you know and you're you're kind of breaking the, the pores of that paint open you know getting a nice paste wax on there in my opinion is a really good idea to just soak into the paint you know those paint the paint needs nourishment you know it's like it needs those oils to to uh, you know maintain it keep it from oxidizing but like I said I mean I don't know this black wax stuff is really awesome and then even wiping it off it almost leaves like um, like your final wipe it's almost got like a, I don't know kind of like an oily polish I don't know I don't know how to explain it but it, it's really nice when you get done wiping it off it looks good and almost kind of the same thing with this high-tech like I don't know this stuff is actually really awesome I probably could have got away with just using this because this is a, you know, it's kind of like a blend of a, of a Carnuba and synthetic, which is pretty much what the Gold Class is. You know, the Gold Class Plus has got the, uh, you know, it's got the synthetic polymers in there along with the Carnuba. So these products are probably pretty similar, but I have to say after I got done wiping this off, it's funny, uh, my dad and uh, Bob were over here and they were both just like, oh man can't believe how great this truck looks so I mean it it does the job so we'll see suit the gold class does them I'm, I'm gonna go make some coffee relax for at least an hour let this stuff kind of soak in there you know that's everything thing with me with wax too like I don't know I'll probably make a video about this but I don't know I kind of I kind of believe in this whole concept of what I call wax loading which is like you know, a lot of people watch this video and be like, wow, you wax that thing three times? 
it's like, yeah, I think that, you know, it takes a few wax applications for the paint to really, you know, get saturated with that wax. So, I mean, that's just kind of my personal take on it. And then, like I said, I mean, you know, you got to do what you want to do. I mean, if you don't want to put three coats of wax on something, then obviously you don't have to. And like I said, I mean, today it's so nice out. I mean, it's just nice to be able to work with the door open. It's like super comfortable. So, I mean, that's what I want to do. I want to put, you know, want to play around with some of this gold class. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. So, I mean, I guess if you really wanted to, like, if I was only going to use one wax, I think I'd use the high tech. Which, I actually want to get this in a paste. I know they make a paste version of this, which I got to get my hands on that because my gold class is getting low. It's all cracked. But uh, I think that's going to be my next paste wax purchase, the, the 26. Because this stuff is pretty awesome. If I was going to pick one wax to do this truck, this would definitely be the go-to wax. But, you know, like I said, I don't know. I did like using the black wax. This stuff is pretty awesome, too. So, I guess my problem is I just like too many waxes. But, I don't think you can get to a point where you have too much wax on a car. So, you know, like I said, it's up to you. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure. You know, if you only want to put one coat of wax on, that's fine. Put one coat on. If you want to be goofy like I am, then go ahead and, you know, put two, three coats of wax on there. That's fine. All right, guys, like I said, I'm going to fire up a pot of coffee, chillax for a little bit, let this uh, gold class really soak into this lightning paint here, and uh, we'll get that knocked off and get going with this fast finish. See what the uh, final result will be here. It's turned out pretty good so far, so pretty excited to see how this ends up. Got the uh, gold class paste wax wiped off of there. I would say it's turned out pretty well. Definitely liking the results. And uh, next step will be putting this fast finish on there to lock it all down. Just in case we get some acid rain. It's looking good though. This tail light's cleaned up real nice. These things look brand new. I'd say that's pretty reflective. I used some of that uh, Never Dull on the exhaust tips. Got those cleaned up pretty decent. So, uh, wax the headlights and we got new fog lights. So, those all got coats of wax on them. You know, especially these aftermarket headlights and fog lights, you really want to try to keep a coat of wax on them. And that's, uh, that kind of stuff is a really good candidate for spray wax or even getting into the quick detailers that have some wax in them. You know, Clean it off with this stuff. It's got that little bit of wax to kind of nourish the plastic and, uh, you know, hopefully prevent the sun from destroying them. <clears throat> but yeah, those new fog lights look really good. See, so yeah, I'm just down to, uh, still got to do something with that front bumper. Just kind of pointless because I know it, no matter what I do, it's going to look terrible, but I'll do something to it. I think for now I'm just going to get the fast finish done. Maybe call it a day, get this thing finished up tomorrow. 
But yeah, it's looking really good. Nice and shiny, very reflective. All right, got the fast finish done. Did the whole truck. And then uh, when I got done doing the truck, I just did all the rims too. So hopefully tomorrow, put the finishing touches on this. Get it uh, to do the tires, get those dressed out, finish that bumper. Should be good to go. Shot of this outside before I pull it in. Got the Meguiar's uh, tire foam going on here. So like what I like to do is I'll spray it on there and usually, usually you'll end up getting some on the rim so I'll just wipe it off with a microfiber towel. So, got them all sprayed up. I like that stuff, it's really fast and easy to use. I also like to use their, uh, that tire gel they make but that stuff it's kind of messy. You know, I'll use that with the uh, Eagle One makes those tire swipes. So that works out pretty good, but like I said, you definitely have to wear gloves and it's kind of messy and you definitely want to let that stuff sit, you know. And same thing with this tire foam, you don't want to apply this and drive the vehicle, you know. Probably want to give it at least an hour, if not two, to really soak in. And best case scenario, you know, just apply it at the end of the day when you're done driving a vehicle so it can sit overnight. It's usually the best results. Got a sponge here and the Tano tonic. So, gonna wipe off the Tano cover with that stuff. Got a little bit of dust on here, so gonna wipe it off with the California car duster. I'm a pretty big fan of this thing. I know a lot of people talk about, uh, you know, it scratches the paint, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, I can see that. You know, it's definitely something you want to keep clean, and you really have to use it the right way. And, you know, I'm not denying that it's going to scratch something, but at the same time, like, whatever scratching this is going to do is probably going to easily be removed with a cleaner wax. So, I mean, it's up to you. And then I'm using it on the tunnel cover anyway, so I'm not really concerned about scratching this thing. It's not really something I'm worried about but this thing is pretty handy like if you've got a if you've detailed your car and it's been sitting it's got a layer of dust on it this thing works out pretty good I'm, I like it I like using it but like I said a lot of people are gonna tell you it scratches the car I don't know what to tell you about scratching cars like I mean you can scratch your car with your fingertips so 
I mean, sometimes it's kind of unavoidable. But to me, like, the other thing with scratching your car, it's like, well, we know how to get scratches out. So, I mean, once again, there's people who, they won't use this. If their car's dusty, they'll wash it off with water and dry it. I mean, that's fine if you want to do that. I mean, to me, like, that's the Ferrari Lambo way of doing it. You know, especially if your car's a daily driver. I mean, once again, it, uh, it's up to you. Only you can decide, like, how crazy you want to get with this stuff. So, we get cracking on this tonneau cover. See what this tonneau tonic can do. All right, looking pretty good. Definitely uh, dirtied up the sponge. I think this is one of those things I'm gonna have to do another application, maybe even tune more. You know, let the product really soak in there. So I'm gonna let this sit for a while. Put another coat on there. Looks pretty good though.